Hey guys, welcome back to Nature's Cadence Farm. Today we're going to be working on our GRM 520 brush cutter here. This uh, this is the Chinese uh, brush cutter that I got um, on the internet. Had it delivered to me. There's some uh, some other videos about this in the link. And uh, but the big thing today, this is the big thing here. We're gonna we're gonna swap out the original handle that we've got on here for a, uh, a set of brush cutter handles. So it'll have the bicycle handles, you know, like a like a real brush cutter. I don't really like these types of handles anyways, but that's what it came with. And I found these on the on the internet, and uh, I'll put some links down below there uh, for the for the items that I purchased here. And uh, I'll explain um, how to get these on here and uh, see if we can get this thing fired up. Check it out. All right, so here's the original, um, you know, trigger assembly and all, and this, and it still works. You can see this stripped out here. Um, you know, it's just not very. You know, I'm sure this one is not, you know, super durable either. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this off, and I'm gonna pull this, um, this, this cover off here for the air filter. And I saved all the tools that came with it. They came in this. Uh, well, they didn't come in this. I put them in here, but they came with the machine. Here's the smaller of the two Allen wrenches, and that fits on the air cleaner cover, super, super good. And I went ahead and checked, and it looks like this new um, bracket here that adapts from the shaft to the handles. These are all the same size, whatever size that is. The smaller, smaller Allen wrench in the packet that came with the machine. So we're going to pull that cover off. We can pull that out of there so we don't drop it. Pull the air filter out of there so we don't lose that. And that exposes our cables and these quick connects here. So these quick connects are the, uh, the shutoff switch. So they just unplug with these bullet style connectors. And then over here it looks like we've got a little a little lock nut and this wrench came with the tool kit also so let's see if we can get in here with this 10 millimeter yep and loosen up just loosen up that nut right there and then looks like we can activate the trigger by hand and pull the uh, pull the cable right out of that retention so now we're ready to uh, unthread unthread the keeper here that goes into that plate just like that and everything comes out so now I've got the original cable assembly detached from the carburetor all right so I've got my number two Phillips here we're gonna back these screws out that hold all this assembly together See if we can get this thing off of here now. Oh yeah. There we go. Pieces and parts going everywhere. Okay. Well that got that. Alright. Yeah, like I said, this did function. It's just I like the brush cutter handles better. So let's see if we can get this thing tilted back up. Alright, so next up we're gonna go ahead and pull this handle off here because that's kind of where the the brush cutters handles are going to be up here where this handle was maybe back a little bit but uh, like I said this Allen wrench works and uh, it's fine and all but what I'm going to use is uh, is some some tools out of this Milwaukee bit set and I think I'm going to need this extension and then one of these Allen wrenches out of here so let's see if we get the right one and let's try this one right here okay so this is Imperial it's a 530 seconds so whatever size that is in metric uh, that's what it would be so let's go ahead and put that in here using my Milwaukee impact drill or driver here let's 
gonna back these screws out. Okay, put that on. Oops. Get that out of the way. Looks like that's one solid rubber piece. We might have to leave that on there. Alright, so let's see. Now the next up is, uh, is to mount this in place of where that was. And I'm expecting it to be around here. I might have to move this mount back a little bit. This is as far back as I could get it. This is a, actually, well, let's talk on that here for a minute. This is a custom mount that I made out of some pieces and parts of a D-ring loop. Uh, this was okay. You know, it's just plastic, and I wanted something a little bit more rigid, so I came up with that. I might leave this on here. Maybe I'll try that out. But the screw fell out, so maybe I can reuse some of these screws and nuts from the original set up and see if we can get that get that going again but nonetheless this is what I came up with in the temporary was a piece of wire wrapped around there that got me through the day when it when it did when I needed it so either way all right let's get this apart and this is the same 530 seconds allen wrench or whatever that is in metric so let's see if we can get this pulled apart now this is split, so that's kind of nice, because you don't have to take it all apart. So this part goes on top, and I think I'll, I think I'll put it like that. Let's try that. So this goes below here, and these get started here. Now, this is going to get moved around quite a bit, probably, because I, I don't know exactly where I want everything yet, so we'll see how that goes. But at least that's that's on there and gotten started so let's go ahead and loosen these up you'll kind of see it take shape now so the trigger the trigger part I'm gonna put on the right I'm sure you could put on the left if you wanted to I'm just feeling inside of there to see kind of where it lines up and then the just the stabilizer handle there however you call it we're just going to go in there like that. So that looks pretty good. If you guys can see that, hopefully you can. Oh yeah. yeah. So let's go ahead and tighten this stuff down. And see how everything kind of lines up. Okay. And let's go ahead and tighten that bottom one up while we're, while we're in here messing around. Got it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the trimmer head back on there and hook up the harness to here and go ahead and try it on and see how it kind of feels. All right, so I kind of test fit everything, kind of just see how it felt. And uh, I definitely need to move this mount back just a little bit to, uh, to help clear everything. And uh, these handles might need to be moved, but for now they seem to be okay. But I'm definitely going to move this back. So I'll put the harness on. Once I get it moved back, I'll show you kind of how I've, how I've got it balanced. So this mount, I used a uh, swivel D-ring type of, uh, like a hold down for a, a trailer or something like that. And just a couple of bolts to hold it in there. It seemed to work pretty good. It seems to be very durable. That's the main thing. And I double nutted everything so it wouldn't... It wouldn't back out on me. I'm not going to worry about tightening up the, the jam nuts here until I um, am confident that that's, that's at a good position. Let's go ahead and try this thing out and uh, see if we can get it to balance well. Alright, so I'm going to put my harness on. And if you get it kind of like this, I don't know if I showed this in any of the other videos, but uh, so this little plastic plate goes in the back. One arm goes through this hole. One arm goes through this hole, and the plate goes in your back. Then you've got this um, this plastic clip that clips in the front. Then that gives you your your mount right here for your trimmer to hang off of. 
it looks like it's balanced very well here let me show you I uh, went ahead and tested it out I moved this forward a little bit and uh, moved this one forward just a little bit and that seemed to give me the right angle to hold on to everything and I can easily swing it and it you know I can let it go and you can see it kind of balances right there that's perfect that way if I need to get a briar or something off of me or swat at a bee or something I don't have to worry about it falling over and I can just get right back to it and, and go right back so this is why I like the bicycle handle so much because it gives you a nice anchor point right here that's at the right place All right, what I'm working on now is getting the throttle cable and these the shutoff switch connected up to the power head here. And uh, what I found was I needed, or at least this right here, didn't have a uh, an adjuster or anything on there for it to mount into this plate. So what I did was I removed this adjuster piece from the old cable and it was crimped on it wasn't very hard to pull off uh, but what i had to do was kind of file down the original throttle cable a little bit so it would fit through the hole and it, and it did it was very easy it's just monkey metal chinesium or whatever but the problem i'm running into now is that this hole is too small on the inside of here so what i need to do is drill this out a little bit bigger to fit that new um, cable so I did a little poking around a little looking and mine was about an eighth of an inch or so to give me plenty of clearance through there so what I did is I put an eighth inch uh, drill bit here in my hand drill and uh, now I'm just going to drill this out right here so let's, let's see if we can do that Again. Get my needle nose back on here. All right, we're through. Okay, so now that we got all that done, we can uh, kind of push this back on here really good. Try to get that kind of seated on there because that'll get held in place once we uh, once we mount everything in there. So let's see here. Looks like that rubber is kind of squishing up on me a little bit. Maybe I'll just get rid of that. There we go. That ought to be good. Alright, let's try that out. Now that we've got all this uh, attached and everything, let's see if we can thread this in here and get it attached to our throttle. So I'm just, uh, let me see if I can get you in here a little closer here. So you can see here I'm just threading this connector right into this plate for the carburetor. So the cable needs to be placed into this groove. It looks like the alignment isn't the exact same as the as the original throttle, which is not surprising. You know, this is all not made in the same factory and who knows what. But let's see if we can get enough enough out of it to get it clipped into this little groove part here. So the throttle might need to be slightly, slightly opened, and this cable, let's see if you can see that, and this cable pushed down into that groove there, maybe open a little bit more. And there it goes. I don't know if you can see that, but it's in there now. Yep, and it looks like it's right up against the stop. So what I had to do was I took this jam nut, and if I needed to, I could have taken that jam nut off maybe and placed it on the back side if it would have fit it might have but either way that's all up on there and uh, it looks like throttle response is perfect it's just tight it doesn't have any uh, slack in the trigger or anything so that's in there so, all right so next up we're just gonna hook up these uh, these wires and it looks like red goes to red and black goes to black so they got that right that's pretty good right so we can kind of tuck those guys in there. Might throw an extra cable tie on there later, maybe like that, something like that, to keep it from getting pulled apart. But let's go ahead and get the carburetor put back together, 
and uh, or at least the air filter assembly and we can go ahead and start it up and see if it works all right air cleaner goes back together I need the filter which is here that just stretches around all these little plastic pins in here so that's nice just like that and then this air cleaner had a little uh, two little plastic holes or plastic pins in the base there that fit into those plastic holes and that doesn't look like it lined up too well so let's try it the other way yes that looks much better and then our cover here that goes over top of everything got to kind of fish it around that choke lever and it fits right on there just like that and then here's our here's our bolt and let's find the allen wrench so it's the small allen wrench again and that just goes right in there and tightens down into the metal plate in the carburetor let's see if we can find that hole feels like I'm in there now there we go okay so that's all back together all right let's get the harness back on and uh, let's see if we can get this thing started up all right we got everything hooked up here I don't have this attached yet but uh, I'll probably end up putting some cable ties or something on there but it'll work for now right so we're gonna put this to on we're gonna squeeze our little operator presence switch push that back push the little button in and then over here we've got the primer bulb we're gonna pump that till it kind of gets a little a little hard there so these uh, choke levers are backwards actually on on uh, these uh, carburetors uh, because so if you have it on run the choke this says on right here so we need to have it to off which is cold start so we should be ready I've got the primer bulb choke switches on triggers on let's see how many pulls it takes I haven't started this in a while maybe a couple weeks now well no maybe about a week so either way let's see what we can do here Like the high idle works that uh, trigger lock there for getting started. So that's nice. Let's go ahead and hook up and uh, give her a go. Okay guys, well that was uh, really easy actually, you know, I, I didn't know it was going to be that easy. I kind of figured I'd have to do a little bit more fabricating. The only hard part was getting that, um, the adjuster for the cable that mounts into the carburetor bracket there uh, drilled out and, and, you know, the new part in, the old part out, whatever. Uh, it's a shame that the new one doesn't come with that already crimped onto it because that would be really nice, but maybe it's a universal kind of adapter and you have to get the the right threads or something but um, okay so final thoughts I loved this weed eater before um, I love it even more now that I have these bicycle handles on here um, I just I really like this setup uh, it's so nice look I mean I can stand here and the machine just hangs right there I can take my glasses off wipe my face or whatever I don't have to put the thing down and pick it back up um, I, I usually hold on to the handle like like this on this side I usually don't have my hand like that or like that or whatever I just kind of hold it like I've always thought maybe having a tennis ball stuck on the top of there so I can kind of hold on to that and, and guide everything and uh, I believe having these handles on here with a brush blade is going to be 
safer. Uh, even though I don't have that anti-kickback, I have this big handle sticking out now, so it, it really can't get to me. And uh, I've had that happen where kickback happens before, and it you know takes off like that. But uh, with this handle on here, it really kind of protects you a lot. I didn't really, I wasn't a big fan of that big plastic thing hanging out. You know, and, and with these harnesses like this, I've, I've had, um, uh, you know, the other Robins with these four-point harnesses and the and the bicycle handles or brush handles, whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, I can, I can run these things for hours, and I have. I've ran, I've, I've had to carry gas with me because I ran, a, ran through so much gas through these things out in the, you know, field somewhere. Uh, that I just I just run it out and you know have to refill it and so I mean that's a lot of runtime on a on a, a weed eater you know brush cutter uh, but anyways having having these handles on here is really going to make this piece of equipment so much more useful it was useful before and I think it's going to be even more useful now even with the hedge trimmers on there because I don't really use this for a hedge trimmer because I don't have any hedges I use it mainly the hedge trimmer I use it mainly for cutting through briars and things that I don't want to get close to um, or have them sling and thrown around with the string or a brush blade uh, but I can use the hedge trimmer and it just chops and drops them right there so that's a really nice really nice option and the pole saw that's not going to be nearly as easy with these so that's that's kind of a downside with having these brush handles on here uh, but you know I don't really use the pole saw that much as cool as it is and it works really well I just I just don't find myself using it right now, and uh, maybe in the future for the price of these machines, maybe I'll just get another you know a whole another set of it uh, and and just have that one with the normal handle on there that I don't need to need to have this. But I find myself needing this setup more so than the other one. So anyways, uh, that's about it for me, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.